So I'm the editor of A Voice for Men Australia. Uh, thank you very much, Barry. Um, now, thank you. first of all, I'd like to start by saying thank you for your tireless work that you've done with uh, the Lone Fathers Association over many, many years. Mm -hmm. uh, today is White Ribbon Day. And uh, now, of course, uh, White Ribbon Australia focuses on men's violence against women. In contrast, Erin Pitsy, who started the first women's uh, shelter, argues that DV, domestic violence is generational, that we need to address domestic violence against men and women to break the cycle. Um, do you have any thoughts on this? Oh, yes. Look, I'm a, we deal with our organisation is made up of 37% women anyway. We don't discriminate. And we see it on both sides. We see violence by women on men and we see violence by men on women. And uh, we we try to encourage our our clients and that to just walk away and just it's not worth it just walk away from it don't get involved and don't don't hit or don't use any aggressive strength or bad language or anything just walk away and you can probably work it out then later on down the line you know that's our way of approaching it now but we are a bit concerned that all this is uh uh, published is all about one side when it actually violence happens on both sides. Hey, and I absolutely agree. That's right. And, it, and I, I, I think that's a great way of approaching it to say. To, and to we, we just, yeah. Go on. We just say just walk away. That's our new pamphlet. And what we're telling guys is because it's not worth it because you'll end up in court. It'll cost you a fortune. You'll lose all contact with your kids. You won't have a chance because it's one word against one's word against the other. And, the system is stacked that way. How we like it or not. How have your experiences been with, uh, particularly with fathers in the courts? Uh, how do you think the courts are, are dealing with them if there's an accusation of well, domestic in, violence? Well, in Australia, since 2011, since the amendment to the Family Violence Bill, it's been shocking. There's been men taking their lives over and everything. And even one of the judges, Judge Collier, has just resigned. And he has put it in the media, I've got a copy of it, that many women are using it as a tool to to get rid of their husband out of their children's life and get more child support. And I'm the longest person involved in the child support scheme in Australia. I was one of the designers of it. And I've, I've even seen that. And I've seen that once in Australia, if you once say stop your seeing your kids once 14 weeks goes past and it triggers an automatic thing within the child support scheme and they will up your child support by nearly double because it means you haven't seen your children not that you just didn't want to see your children it's just that you can't get to see them because the other parent can deny them and the court doesn't punish them for perjury or anything like that so, so in effect, someone can be denied access to their own children and then punished as well for for having for having yes. nothing out of Well, it's them. terrible hard to get to get uh, once you're denied the access. It's terrible hard to get action straight away on that. It can take months and months and months. And, and it, uh, if you haven't got a lot of money, it can cost you up to thirty-five, forty-five, and fifty-five thousand dollars to even you know if the if the other partner wants to fight you to go to court and then. And that's another thing we're telling them, even if you can't talk to each other, come into our office and we'll sit you up with a cup of coffee or a cup of tea and you can, even if you hate each other's guts, but we want to show you this project of what it's going to cost you if you keep fighting. For goodness sake, just forget your bitterness with each other for your kids' sake and try to work out something and... Work it out between yourselves, and it costs you about four hundred dollars to get it registered in the court by the registrar, and you're saving yourself thousands and thousands of dollars from the from the from fighting each other in the courts. It's glorious. Absolutely, and it's it's much better to have both the uh, both of the kids in the children's lives as they possibly can. I think that's what all the evidence is. is saying. Look, I'm one of the first to say we we won't. We won't help anyone unless they're help supporting their children. That's for men and women. And financially and emotionally, you know, we, we believe that the children have that right to be loved and respected by both parents and grandparents on either side and extended families. And until we can get people to, to forget their bitterness and communicate for the sake of the children, 
and we're still going to go through all this, and we're still going to see suicides, and mainly men, and, and it's strange that it's rec- laws, of, uh, sorry, statistics come out in Australia that one in every three men that take their lives have a child support or a family law problem. Mm-hmm. That's a that's a huge component, absolutely. It is, it is, and it, that's the that's done. I think it's the Australian Bureau of Statistics. If if I'm right, statistics. Yeah, but no, we look. We don't want to see violence against women, or we don't want to see violence against men either. Well, that's the thing, isn't it? I mean, you personally, I object to violence against everyone. I think we should. My feeling is that we should be uh, we should be trying to to reduce violence against both men and women. And as Aaron Pitsy says, it's an, it's a it's a generational problem. Well, it is, but it's got the trouble is see. I'm not not going against mums or that, but if you walk down through Australia and in the cities and that, there's all these legal uh, legal p- p- dropping centres for women and stuff like that. There's none for men, none whatsoever. There's no legal services for anything like that. You know, there's no men's children's crisis service when they've got their children and stuff like that. And mm-hmm. it's very very one-sided. Absolutely, there's a, there's a distinct lack of services for men, aren't there? Yeah. Well, see, I'm taking up another project, another area, if you don't mind me saying, where men are men are suffering. His, and a lot of us cause for a family breakup because when you get stressed, really stressed, you can get prostate cancer. Now there's 55 men every day diagnosed in Australia with being told the sad news that they're suffering from prostate cancer and 3,300 are dying. And yet in places like Canberra, we have no real decent machine that can do the full job and, and help these people. The one we've got is so old and old and out of date that they've got to go to Sydney or Melbourne or something like that. So uh, I'm starting a campaign. I'm just waiting on the final word from the ACT government to say if, if they're not going to do nothing, then I'm going public and I'm going to raise the money to buy the machine. Oh, that's wonderful! I hadn't heard that before, actually. And I, I well, know. it will save men's lives. Like uh, when you go, there is a the machine's two hundred and seventy thousand dollars for just a laser machine, but it'll break stones and everything. But uh, when we put this up for men's services, all the excuses in the world come, you know, and they can't do it and they can't do it. Well, I've had a lot of I've had quite a few friends die with prostate cancer. And uh, in this organisation, you're hearing of it all the time, you know. And I've got a specialist, a top specialist in Australia back at me, and we will go public and we will get this. Otherwise, in, you've got to wait your turn in Canberra to be able to go to Melbourne or Sydney, and it's a, and it's a big cost. And, and if you haven't got the money, well, you just don't go. And the government just aren't spending money on men's health in general. Well, That's least... right. And and the reason I can say this, I was I was a men's health ambassador for Nicola Roxford in the previous Labor government, and we set up worked for eighteen months to set up a men's health policy, which we got through the, the government put it through after 18 months. They put enough money in to give each man in Australia a 34-cent headache tablet. That's <laughs> all we got. <laughs> so, look, I'm not trying, not crying poor for men, but it is. It's a terrible state of affairs. It's so one-sided. It is, absolutely. And I have men with children in Canberra come into my office. They've got nowhere to stay and got no accommodation and that. And there's no crisis service to send them. There's no no place we can send them. My organisation has got to fork out and pay for for food and accommodation till we can find somewhere. You know. Mm-hmm. So it's look. I back White Rim and Day. Don't get me wrong. And nice. As I said, I don't support violence against women, but I don't support it against men who. It's exactly right. We need to. We need to. Children. That's right. Absolutely. We need to work to reduce all violence. We well, should... I'm working very hard about it. I spoke to one of the ministers today. I'm trying to get appointments with the ministers on this very thing. I want to get the 2000 and family, 2011 amendment to the family violence bill repealed because it's discriminative and it's one-sided and it is causing suicide. Even the police are saying. 
it's terrible. We got to go out there, and the man can be the victim, but we got to we got to evict him out of the home because we, we're told we've got to protect the mother and child at all costs. It doesn't matter. Mm-hmm. <laughs> These are. I didn't think we could ever get laws like this, but we've got them. Yeah, that's that's the point we're at now. Absolutely. We probably should finish up there. Thank you very much. For no, I really today, appreciate Barry. you giving me the time. But I just don't want people to think that we're against women. We're not against women. We help women. They're in and out my office all day long getting free advice. Absolutely. Absolutely. You were saying about 35% of your organisation, uh, Lone Fathers. 37, seven, 37 and growing. And uh, next to myself, our senior people like vice presidents and treasurers and secretaries and that, and even some branch presidents are all women. And they're women that say, we've got to have laws that are equal. You know, the children should have a right to see both of us and our and their grandparents and their extended family. That's, that's us down in a nutshell. Absolutely. Absolutely. Well, thank you very much, Barry. No problem. It's a pleasure to talk to you again. Thank you. And we'll, we'll talk oh, to you this soon. This is our 41st year, too, that we've been in operation. Oh, wow. And we won President Obama's Personal Volunteer Achievement Awards, and that's still a something. That's excellent. That really is. Mm. Yep. Thank you very much. We'll be we'll uh, we'll talk to you soon. Thank you. Bye. Thanks. Bye bye.